There we go. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to the VR Game Nights live stream, where we cover all of the week's virtual reality news. And my co-host, uh, Sir Aga, Agask, please, is moving, so he's not available to join me. So I figured I'd just uh, go ahead and do the show here right before the Gamer Show uh, lead cast. We're doing a little bit later. But uh, as you can see, I finally got the shelves up. I got my... Uh, my uh, sword out online sword up and i got the shelves up with all the hmds pointing away from the window so they don't get that glare in the lenses and um with that said what a great exciting week of virtual reality virtual reality news so let's just jump right into it here i don't have my stream deck set up yet so i'm using the mouse but in any case let's take a look at what we got here um uh, the first thing we'll take a look at this week, I think the biggest news, is No Man's Sky, right? The announcement for No Man's Sky, the update, the Beyond update that includes virtual reality, is coming out on August 14th. That's Wednesday, right? And this is awesome. I'm so looking forward to that. We had so much fun playing this game over at the game show um, in just regular 2D. So having it in, in, uh, in VR is going to be awesome now the one the only thing i'm worried about is they don't say anything about um windows mixed reality support so my friends with windows mixed reality i have a couple of windows mixed reality headsets myself um that you may end up having to still use your uh, your uh, you know xbox controller or whatever because they don't say anything about windows mixed reality controller support they talk about rift they talk about vive they talk about index, <laughs> but no the MWR. So that may be the only downside. But in any case, um, I'm excited about this. Now, there is an awesome video on YouTube that uh, IGN did. So if you look up IGN, they have a great interview with Sean Murray. It goes into a lot of details about the three pillars of the Beyond release. But I really like the section when they're talking about virtual reality and how they... I'm just having a problem saying that tonight. Virtual reality. <laughs> where he talked about how they had to actually update all of the cockpits of every single vehicle, every single spaceship, every single uh, land vehicle, submarine, the whole nine yards, so that it was, you know, sized appropriate in VR, but also that you could reach out and grab the handles, you know, the throttle and the stick and, you know, whatever you were doing, the steering wheel, with your virtual reality controllers, and actually drive those uh, those uh, devices. So I'm looking forward to it. I think we're going to see some, even in 2D, we'll see some changes as far as perspectives. Like the, I think the ships will look bigger and different things will look bigger because I think they felt a little claustrophobic in VR. But in any case, great interview. Check that out. It's over at IGN. And I think that's the biggest news. Um, there was also a trailer that they released this trailer really focused on the multiplayer side of it not on the vr that was all released back in um, you know i think it was april and i think you know really what i would say to that is you know the biggest thing for me is the fact that you'll be able to play up on pc up to 32 players we'll be able to uh go you know visit with each other in a shared social space like the tower from destiny and uh, it's called the nexus you'll be able to warp it into whatever system you're in and go up there and, uh, you know, use the shops and also mingle with other people. And supposedly they'll be able to come to your base. So you should be able to have 32 people running around your moon or your base and hanging out with you. Now, the one thing they didn't talk about is the, the fire teams of the squads. They didn't say how big they were. So right now we're limited to four player co-op. Um, yes, yeah, so maybe we can see 32 people in one place, but how many people can work together? at a common goal, on a mission. I know, you know games like Burnout Paradise were awesome for the fact that you could, um, you know, you had co-op uh, missions for eight players, seven players, six players, five players, um, all the way down to two. So I don't know if they, they, they haven't talked about that at all. So hopefully they do the same thing. They have challenges for missions for larger groups of people. But in any case, um, very excited about this. So Wednesday, um, we're not doing over at Live from the Oasis. We're not going to do a co-op net. I'm just going to play No Man's Sky in VR uh, on Wednesday night by myself. So I'm really looking forward to that, giving it a shot. Uh, up next, um, uh, if you are a sim racer, I think you're going to like this story. Let me get the menu out of the way here. This is over at VR Focus. Uh, this week, Dirt Rally 2 
got VR support, which is awesome. So Rift, HTC Vive, Valve Index. Now, if you have the game, you can now play it. Right now it's on Steam, I believe. Um, and they're working to get it on Oculus. But uh, in any case, so if you're a Dirt Rally 2 fan and you want to play in VR, it's now available. I've heard some people saying they're having problems with this. I don't own the game. I have uh, the, I think I have um, uh, Dirt, the original uh, Dirt that's, is it Dirt 4? I can't remember. That supported um, uh, VR and um, it's an older game, so the visuals ain't that good. So I really never got into it. Project Cars 2 was really cool in VR, except that, I don't know, there's some something with the motion that didn't feel right to me. But I know a lot of people love playing that game in VR. So that was big news. You know, we knew they were talking about doing it early in the year and it just popped out this week. Next up. Now, this is an MMO. If you haven't heard about Nos Tos, it's an MMO that, you know, you can see I got the sword out online, um, um, sword behind me. And, um, you know, this is said to be a lot like sword out online, you know. You're not going to be playing Carito in here, you know. <laughs> but um, in any case, uh, Nos Tos has had a lot of buzz because of its similarities to look and feel like and again, there's really only one MMO in VR today, right? Orbis, and which I haven't played. We're playing. We got it on the schedule for two weeks from now. Now that they have the uh, the free demo for Orbis, you can play the Steam version up to level 10 for free. So the guys and I are just going to hopefully play that over on uh, over on the live from the Oasis channel. But uh, this is a game that's been in alpha and beta, and um, or in alpha, and some people have played it and and and. Some of the areas looked really nice. Some looked really rough, and uh, but still exciting. I hope if they are able to launch it this year, that they have a great launch. That that it doesn't come out um, broken. That's my biggest fear with this. But definitely a game a lot of uh, VR players have been, uh, you know, VR gamers have been keeping an eye on. So to hear that that's coming out this year is pretty cool. Uh, next up, I wanted to I wanted to throw out. Um, you know, with being the 50th anniversary of landing on the moon, I didn't even know anything about this uh, this uh, experience. Capcom Go, Apollo VR Planetarium. Um, it looks really cool. It's coming soon. Um, so if you're into, you know, space and, you know, space history, this may be something good. I uh, have on Life from the Oasis, I played the Apollo 11 experience, and I really, really liked it. Um, I played the HD experience, and I saw a little stuttering. Some people have said the standard experience doesn't have that stuttering, but um, I truly enjoyed that on the PC. So this is something else you might want to keep an eye out for if you're uh, if you're into that. Next thing I want to talk about is just uh, sales. Um, what games are on sales this week? Now this will probably update. I think this updates every Tuesday. So if you're watching this Sunday night or you're watching this uh, Monday, keep in mind these won't be around for very long. But here you can see one of my favorite games. Furious Seas. This is a great single-player game. No seasickness. I really like this game, and uh, it's on sale for $13.99. There is a multiplayer mode, like a horde mode or a firefight mode, which I've really enjoyed and uh, with the guys. And I uh, just wanted to throw this list up here. Red Matter. Uh, I know Red Matter just came out on the Quest, but I think it's like twice as expensive over there than it is on PC. And the PC version is the definitive version. So if you have the PC, you know, if you have a, a PC VR headset, then you may want to get Red Matter here versus if you also own the Quest. It's not cross by, sadly. But um, I'm just looking through here to see if there's any other. Let me see if I can zoom in on this. Make it easier for my old eyes. Uh, let's see anything else that sticks out at me. And again, this is over at reddit.com forward slash VR game deals. I check this every day and they have some great stuff over there. Um, yeah, those are the two that really stuck out at me. Now, if you have a favorite that you see on sale, please leave it in the comments. I love hearing what you guys think as well. Um, okay, so over, let's talk about the, uh, let's talk about Valve. They recently canceled the virtual link adapter for the index. And, um, you know, Kind of disappointing because guess what? Virtual Link, that single cable, it's like a USB-C cable, that single cable for VR headsets. Um, that's supposed to be the future, right? Instead of having two or three cables, we can just have one. It plugs right directly into your video card. You're good to go, right? Well, they canceled it for two reasons. Number one, which is, is understandable, 
the adoption of virtual link has been slow, right? It's only in the highest end stuff, the highest end video cards. Most laptops don't have it. Even with RTX graphic cards, they don't have it. Um, or the USB-C port on the laptops aren't tied into the graphic card, so they can't support it, even though they have USB-C. Um, the other thing they said, though, is it's still kind of flaky, you know? And that, that's my paraphrasing it. But they're saying, you know, the, you know, the, the ability to just plug it in and have it work wasn't there. They, the engineers, the software engineers worked on it for a while, and they're like, uh, you know, I don't know if it's the drivers aren't ready yet that from, from the uh, video card manufacturers or what, but they were like, look, we just could not get it to work reliably, and we're like, there's not a huge demand for it, so they went ahead and um, gave everybody refunds and credits and, and uh, canceled it. So that's a little disappointing. It doesn't mean... You know, virtual link is out of it right now. It just means that, uh, you know, for 2019, you're not going to be using virtual link for your uh, your Valve Index headset. And I don't think anybody else uh, has uh, virtual link. I mean, I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments. But as of today, I don't think anybody else has a virtual link uh, cable for their headset. So let's see what's next here. This This really surprised me. Um, Vive and Rift have been fighting for the uh, number one spot in the Steam survey um, for a long time for VR headsets. But um, apparently the Rift S is selling extremely well because now when you combine the two, they're well over they're well they're over 50% market share or 50% of the connected devices. I know a lot of people say they've upgraded from the CV1 to the Rift S. I didn't. Right, you can see my CV1. I think it's right here. Um, I just, just didn't feel like it was that big of an upgrade. Um, so I got a Quest instead. But um, you know, I, I know a lot of first-time um, VR users, like my friend Downriver, that's this, the, the Rift S is their first headset. It's $399, everything included. So you know, if you wanted to get into VR today with an index, you're looking at $999. It's a huge difference, right? So um, in any case... This is, I think, pretty big, and this kind of spilt over to something else. Uh, but let me first show you that Steam survey, so you can see it here. This is right on Steam's website, so you can see this is the uh, the chart over here. And um, you know, Windows Mixed Reality had been really growing in adoption too. It was well over 10%. I think it was over 11%. But um, you can't buy them anymore. You know, they were on sale everywhere for 200 bucks. That's why I picked up a couple to play with my grandkids. But um, they're out of stock everywhere now. Don't know if there's going to be a WMR version 2 or not. I don't think it's needed. We've talked about this before. But uh, in any case, you know, I think companies like HP and Samsung and Acer, they can make their own second version. They don't need Microsoft involved. But uh, in any case, it looks like that Windows Mixed Reality is starting to slump. I think some people are starting to trade them in or, or, or you know, just put them back in the box and get a a Rift S or another device. Maybe it's a, a Index or a Quest. Who knows? But in any case, speaking of the Quest, Mike over at Virtual Reality Oasis. Man, I'm having trouble talking tonight. Mike over at Virtual Reality Oasis um, had a great review on the Quest. Like, is it worth it? Like, three months after he got his, was it worth it? So if you're looking for something else to watch, check that out. Mike does a great job. The channel is Virtual Reality Oasis and uh, I just I thought he did a phenomenal job with, with some of the history, too. And then, uh, you know, uh, which I had forgotten, you know, because it's been a while. But in any case, um, that's that. Now, the other story I wanted to share. Nope, that's not it. This is it. So this is over at VR Focus. And this is a... Um, the XRDC's innovation report. Now, this is where they uh, poll everybody to see, hey, what are you working on? I, and, and last three times, excuse me, the last three times the reports come out, Vive had a, you know, was winning. You know, when compared to all of the headsets, most developers were working on the Vive. Okay. And I found that very interesting. I saw, um, you know, Rift did start growing over time, but the Vive was always, you know, the number one. And, you know, granted, the Vive 
I would have to say has the the market share is the market share leader in um, you know destination based VR places you know where you go to the mall and you put the VR VR headsets on and play in a in a um, you know like an arcade environment but um, you know I think with the Oculus Rift and Quest you're we're seeing just a huge spike in interest in Oculus and um, for the first time ever it's they beat out the Vive you can see the Vive up here so very interesting to see that very interesting to see that and it'll be interesting too if the cosmos changes that but right now with the rumored price is 6.99 personally i think it's doa it doesn't have enough pluses over the rift s to be worth the extra 300 bucks in my opinion i mean you may feel different let me know let me know in the comments if you do but that is an interesting swing and then lastly um, you know, we had a couple of weeks ago, we had a story saying Apple's totally out of the VR, AR market. And now we're getting some, a flurry of stories saying Apple's hiring a bunch of new people for their VR and AR, you know, uh, development uh, jobs. So very interesting, very interesting to see, uh, to see where that goes. Cause Apple is a major player. I mean, uh, there are a lot of people who just, if Apple releases a product, they buy it cause they're big fans of Apple, you know, um, so I thought that was very interesting, too. And uh, with that, that was all the big news for me. The biggest thing that I'm looking forward to is Wednesday when uh, No Man's Sky comes out in VR. I'm looking forward to walking around on alien planets and jumping in my spaceship and actually climbing in my spaceship and flying it with my controls and be able to reach out and touch things. And I don't know. I hope it's really cool. But uh that's it for this week's news. You know, I try to check the news every day, the VR news every day. And those are my top stories. If you think I missed something, please let me know in the comments. Of course, a new week starts tomorrow morning. So we'll have new news stories coming out then. And uh, if you want to catch us, uh, we will be playing, I will be playing solo, No Man's Sky in VR for the first time Wednesday night. Uh, typically about 7 p.m. Eastern time is when I start, and that's on the Live from the Oasis channel. You'll see a link right from our homepage here at VR Game Nights. And um, if you want to check out uh, check us out tonight, we're playing Elite Dangerous tonight, not in VR. Um, and we'll be doing some Thargoid hunting, so that's what we're doing over there at the Gamer Show 1 website, which is also linked to from the VR Game Nights website. Um, and the VR Game Nights YouTube channel, which if you're watching this live, that's where you're watching it from. So in any case, um, tomorrow morning, I will publish this. I will put all the links to everything we looked at in the show notes, so you'll be able to find everything. And I just want to wish everybody a great week. Hope to see you next weekend here with more VR news. During the week, let me know any thoughts, opinions, suggestions, um, you know, pros and cons. Let me know all your thoughts on virtuality, and we'll try to include them in the show next week. But with that, because it's just me, all you got were my opinions tonight. So um, with uh, with uh, Aga being out for four to six weeks or eight weeks with the move, um, I'm running solo. So if you're a big fan of VR and you want to join me as a guest on the show, send me that message too. But with that, I'm going to sign off and go get ready for Elite Dangerous over at the Game of Show 1. So until next time, my friends, peace. <laughs>